Throughout this seminar, most of our teachers are going to be telling stories from their own life as they teach because that's an integral part of Youth with a Mission. It's one of our core values that we do first and then teach. But we do want to have several sessions that are just stories. We're going to call them testimonies from the field. And so this first one is from our friend again, who's a missionary in Central Asia, and going to share about how DTS actually became the launching pad of his life into missions. So I hope you're excited. Careful, this one's a little bit, little bit dangerous to listen to because as you enter into DTS, it can change a whole lot. I hope you're excited. Hello and welcome to this session on why you should never do a DTS because it's really dangerous for your spiritual health. Uh, my name is Jeff Walkus. Uh, I'm from the US. I have lived in Central Asia for the last 20 years uh, working with YWAM. Uh, married, uh, amazing wife Becky, two kids Rain and Sage who are uh, teenagers now. And in this session I would like to give you an overview of how my life was radically changed in ways I could not have imagined uh, during my DTS, the lecture phase, the outreach, and how that completely changed the trajectory of what I could have imagined and how God would use my life. So let me uh, give you a little overview uh, of uh, how I came to work with YWIM, um, what DTS was like, and uh, how that affected my life. So uh, I became a believer when I was 25 years old. Uh, I was living in Chicago in the United States, um, had a real uh, radical encounter with God, and I figured that the next thing I should do is probably go to a church. So I looked in a phone book. And because I just said the words phone book, that's a little indication of what time that was. It was 1999, actually 98. And I found a church, went to the church. Um, it was fine. Um, and someone got up and talked about this thing called YWAM, which I thought, that's a really weird name. Why Wham? And, uh, and they talked about this uh, experience that they had had and how God had really moved them and transformed them. And so afterwards, I went and talked to the person. I found out about this thing called DTS. And I thought, that sounds good. Didn't really know what it was. Actually, didn't have any idea what it was. Had never heard of it. I really thought we were, it was going to be like about God. And then we were going to go uh, save the whales or help poor people. Um, I think God actually protected my heart that moment because if he had given me a glimpse of how much he was going to transform my life, I would have been scared and run away. But God is, he's gracious and he's kind. So a couple of months later, um, I arrived uh, in the mountains of Colorado. And um, I proceeded to be really freaked out by what was happening. I didn't understand the vocabulary or the language or the motions during worship. Um, it was all very foreign to me. What I knew at that point was something in my heart said, yes, I want to know God. I didn't know how to understand what God would do. I, I, I just, I showed up because he said to go. I can't say that my motivations were ultimately right or wrong, but what I realized is God wasn't even that concerned with why I came. He just wanted me there because he knew that in that time he had a plan that he wanted to start to unveil in my life. And so uh, the first few weeks of DTS were, to me were, were really radical. I, I began to hear things that I had never heard before, like God is good. <laughs> Did you know this? That God is genuinely really good. He is gracious and he's kind. And I was, I was stunned. I also came to realize that discipleship takes work. You mean discipleship is discipline? Like I have to be disciplined? That was a surprise to me. As I began in this DTS journey, I can tell you honestly, my heart was pointed in the right direction, but I sometimes didn't know what to do. Uh, I think I asked a lot of silly questions because I just didn't know who God was. I was stunned week by week at the teachers that would come and how they taught with authority. There was a week um, that, that someone came and they taught about the message of grace. And I, although I had been to church when I was younger, um, I, I didn't ever really understand what it meant that God loves me unconditionally, that there's nothing I do to earn it, but that it was really that the message of grace is so rich and so good. And it, it, it really just, it moved my heart. Um, I had come to DTS, you know, I had struggled with addictions over the years and I didn't really struggle with them. I just did them. Um, and so I was trying to walk in freedom and had in a lot of areas, uh, you know, one area of my life that still wasn't was in you know, smoking cigarettes and 
that's not the ultimate form of you know discipleship smoking or not smoking but it was a personal thing i was really trying to be free of and and this teacher's talking about grace and how we're unconditionally loved and i've got a pack of smokes in my pocket and suddenly i just was burning like i i can be free if god loves me I can. and so i just stood up in the middle of class and <laughs> i've never had anyone do this to me as a dts teacher feel free to sometime and i just threw the cigarettes across the room i was like fine like pray for me or do whatever you do because i want to be free <laughs> the class came around and anyways I got to know the teacher later he said yeah that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in DTS because I wasn't even talking about anything related to you know addiction and freedom but there was something in my heart where where God was beginning to work in these deep ways and I wanted to respond and even though I didn't always know how to but there was something about that resonance of like God's spirit and and working in my my inner person um I had to learn the, the, the language of, of uh, the Bible. I didn't really understand how to read and obey the Bible. You know, the DTS was the first time I'd ever opened up the, the Bible and sat and spent time with God. And one of my favorite things, I would go out early in the morning and I'd sit on this big rock in the mountains and I would just open up my Bible and just God would be speaking. And uh, um, this is actually the Bible that I got uh, right before I went to DTS. And in the back of it, there are some of these blank pages and um, you can see these scribblings because I thought that there were just a couple of good things in the Bible. So I would just write a few of them on the back pages as sort of an index for myself because I had no concept that this whole book was a beautiful story about God's revealing his heart for his creation. So I thought I was just going to capture it in the back a couple of pages. And then I started to realize, oh, the whole thing is full of really good news. And so I learned to read the Bible. I learned to read and appreciate both to study the Bible but also just to meditate, to sit and to spend time with God and ask, what do you want to speak to me? I learned that God communicates. You know, I never understood that. I thought praying was just saying, you know, I did this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. And what I realized is God wanted to speak into my character. He wanted to reveal his plans. He wanted to speak through me to other people. Um, um, as, a, as a really young believer, it was probably the... Uh, third or fourth week of our DTS, and we were told we were going to go to this conference. I'd never been to a conference before. I didn't know what that meant. And so we had some days of fasting and asking God what he wanted to say to us before we went. And again, that was a whole crazy experience. I didn't understand what fasting was. I learned it's not a time where you should just drink lots of coffee and eat, eat caffeine tablets to reduce your appetite because that just makes you jittery and crazy. Again, my, my heart was in the right direction. I just had no idea about uh, all of these things. So we're, we're having a prayer time, and I felt like God spoke to me and said, when you go to this conference, there's going to be a girl in a red dress, and when you see her, I want you to go pray for her. And I was so excited, and so I shared it with the community, and I thought, I think I heard something from God, and they were like, okay, that's great, let's hold on to it, and see what happens. So we go, to the, we go to the conference, first day, second day, third day, there's no one in a dress, everyone's in jeans and t-shirts, and you know, but I'd shared this, and so people were kind of aware of it, and so on the very last day, I was upstairs in the sec, in the mezzanine, and my friend Aaron, who's in DTS with me, he comes over, and he said, hey, did you see her? And I said, see who? And I look, and there's a girl wearing a red, like, prom dress, and my heart just sank, like, oh, no, what am I going to do? And so I couldn't deny that it was God, so we went down, and uh, Aaron prayed for me, and and he, yeah, as a confirmation, he even said, I think that we, I think that God wants to even tell you her, her name. And I was like, well, that would be weird. What do I do with that? And so I prayed. I felt like God you know, spoke to me about even who her name was. And so I, I don't know how to pray for someone. I've never done it before. I've only been in DTS now for a couple of weeks. So I've learned that um, in YWAM, apparently, we put our hands on each other and pray for each other. I don't, I don't know why. But so I, I go down and I go s slide in the row in front of her. And I had to talk myself up to doing it. So I just went one, two, three. And I turned around and I said, hey, is, are you so-and-so? She said, yes. And I was like, oh, I think I'm supposed to pray for you. <laughs> she, she was like, oh, okay. So uh, I learned that you're supposed to bow your head and close your eyes and put your hand on the person. So I start praying for her. And I don't, I don't remember anything I prayed. Um, but at one point, I remember like kind of opening my eyes and peeking. And I see she's, she's crying. And I felt so bad. It's like, I must be doing it wrong. What have I said wrong? Stop. No, it'll be okay. And... Anyway, so I get done praying, and um, I just walked away. I didn't know what else to do. So she came out, and we talked for a few minutes, and she said thank you, and it was great. And I felt like, wow, I heard from God, and I obeyed. And it was one of the first times I had really 
heard God ask me to do something and I had done it and I felt this sense of like, well done. Okay, well at the same conference, um, a man comes up and says, hey, he's, he's up, up, up speaking. And he says, uh, I have a word here. I feel like God's given me uh, something I'm supposed to speak to someone, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I just want you to know there's someone here named Jeff. You're searching for what God has for your life. You're not sure what that is. And you're about to leave this session right now. So he just wants you to know, wait here and come find me afterwards. And I'll, I'll tell you what I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you. And I was stunned because I thought, well, I mean, it could be any Jeff, right? And so afterwards, all kinds of people had come up for prayer ministry. And so I, I slowly walked up and, and the man looked at me and he said, hey, you're Jeff. And this is what God wants to say to you. And he begins to um, prophesy things about my life, of the journey I'd been on and how I came here and, and the things I had struggled with. And he said, but none of that matters. God just wanted to get your attention because he wants you to know is this. He has called you. He's redeemed your life. He saved it from certain death. He's given it back to you, but it's not for you. It's for you to be poured out that he would be known in some of the least reached places on the earth. And that was it. <laughs> I thought, what do I do with that? So we head back to Colorado after the conference. These two amazing things happen. I'll fast forward the story. A year, a year later, um, I was not at the base, but a family was driving through and they heard there was a YWAM base there. And so they went out to visit and they met with some of my friends who were working in the office and they said, hey, a year ago, our daughter was at this conference and she met this guy from YWAM who prayed for her. Do you know anyone named Jeff who would have been at this conference in Texas? And they said, yeah, actually, we were there together. They said, well, our daughter, um, she had been really struggling in a relationship with the Lord and a relationship with uh, uh, someone that she was dating that was not healthy and was at a real a crisis. And she felt like God said, I want you to go. And on the last day, I want you to wear your red dress. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to come and speak to you through someone. And so she didn't want to. It was embarrassing, but she wore a red dress and she went in and this guy came and he, you know, prayed and spoke about God's plans for her and her best. And, um, and it was a confirmation to her that she, this was not the healthy relationship with her, that she was to pursue her nursing degree and all these things. And she's now, for the last year, she's been walking with the Lord and she's thriving and it really changed her life. And you guys, when I heard this, I was so deeply impacted, like, what does God do when we say yes to him? How does he use our lives? Like, I couldn't believe he would speak through me when I didn't know how to pray. I didn't have the right words. I didn't know like how the four, I'd, but he just said, do this. And through that, he transformed this girl's life. And I, this is what started happening to me in DTS is I started to realize that God wants to radically transform our hearts so that we know who we are. And when we know who we are, which is his beloved, we learn to say yes to anything he asks, and we just do it. We live lives of hearing and obeying. And that just became the rhythm of my life. See, here's what I realized. I thought I was going to do a DTS for six months. Uh, I realized I've been in a DTS for the last 20 years. That the DTS, is the, it should be called the Introduction to Discipleship School. It's where we learn these rhythms of hearing God, and we put it into practice. We hear God, and we obey. And I can tell you guys, I was not always a good DTS student. I was on the verge of being sent home numerous times. I didn't even know it. On my, on my outreach, turns out my outreach leader, who I love to this day, she was regularly praying and saying, God, this guy is so rebellious. Can I send him home? So she actually consulted with, who's not my wife. Yes, I met her on outreach. It was a good outreach. She met with Becky and she said, what do I do about this guy? I want to send him home, but God keeps telling me I can't. And so they came and addressed me and they said, you know, you're being really um, rebellious and independent. And I was shocked. I was like, this is the least rebellious I've ever been. I thought I was doing great. And God used it again to really break down my heart and say, yeah, you think you're doing okay, but I want to teach you even more. What does it mean when you submit your whole life and your desires and what you think you have a right to? Like, I have a right to voice my opinion. And he said... Actually, you don't have a right to that. You have a right to submit to people, to love them, to do what I ask. And it was like another layer. When I thought I had understood more about God, he went to another layer of how he really wanted to address who I was as a person. One of the things that really made a big impact to me in my, my DTS is I started to realize that God actually had a purpose for my life. You guys, I had never really thought that my life could be given completely to God and he would use it in ways where people would come to know him, people would be discipled, people would hear the gospel. Like, So 
I, I got my first opportunity to share my testimony at a prison, a youth prison in Denver. And um, I don't know what happened. I'd never spoken publicly. I'd never given a testimony. And I just failed spectacularly. At some point in trying to give this kind of speech, somehow I, I, it came across that I was just yelling at people in the detention center. I was very passionate, but I didn't know what I was doing. And so the passion just kind of came across as as condemnation and anger. And I could see my DTS leader in the back. She was going, oh, no. Oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> in the end, I actually had to go and... Uh, ask forgiveness of some of the, the youth in the detention center because I'd just gone off the rails. And, um, but God, you know what? God began to use it because I realized I actually want to learn how to translate what God's doing in my life into being able to teach, to talk about it. I'd never thought about that before. And it started in my DTS. And in the recent years, as I'm doing everything today, like it actually has become, become something that God took this desire and he began to teach me in DTS. How do you share in a way that's that's gentle and, and constructive. Like, how do you take the words that God's giving you and then make them useful for someone else? And that's called God's mission. Um, one of the other things that happened in, in DTS for me, we came to, to Central Asia on outreach. And within the first few weeks, we met these two guys. And one of them, through our little uh, Bible study, he gave his life to the Lord. And the other one didn't. And they were both friends. And we went to their village and we met their families and we studied the Bible with them. And by the end of the outreach, I realized I could stay here. Like, what if I, what if I just spent a couple of years with these guys? Like, if I know who, who's going to share the gospel with them? And so sitting in the back of the car um, on the way to the airport, I remember asking God, could I come and spend some time here? Could I learn the language and, and, and share the gospel with people? Could we find practical ways to like show people God, your love and, God, would you mind if I stayed here for a little while? And I heard this clear word of the Lord. He said, yeah, okay. That was the calling. Here's what I realized is you don't need a calling. You can just say yes and go anywhere and love people in God's name. And so that led to uh, eventually coming back and saying, I'll spend a couple of years. And But what happened in, in, the, in the outreach portion is I began to realize that God has a mission to make himself known on the earth. And we are called to participate with that. So that means everyone is called to be part of God's mission. I just chose to do it in Kyrgyzstan because I loved the people. I loved the girl. I loved the place. And I felt like God said, yeah, okay, that's fine. But what the beginning of that journey was this thing in DTS where God began to say, hey, you're made for a purpose. Like, I want to use your life to actually affect the world for my kingdom. I want to establish my kingdom and I want you to be a part of it. And that just revolutionized my life. This is why I said at the beginning, be careful you do a DT, if you do a DTS, because it might radically change who you are, what you do, and how you understand God. And I'll tell you this, it might change it in a radically good way. So uh, in summary, um, I was just thinking about the, the verse in, in Philippians, where Paul says, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider everything rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. This is what happened to me, DTS, is I found the surpassing, the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And con compared to that, everything else just seemed like rubbish. And what I thought I came to DTS for, I thought I came to learn about God. What I walked away with, with was actually becoming more like Jesus. So what did I learn? I learned how to read the Bible, which I'd never done, like to really study. I learned how to develop in my character. Um, I learned that I was his beloved. That when he sees me, he says, you are my beloved. I learned that I could have truth and talk to people without arguing them. I learned that God is good and his message of grace is the most life transforming. So all these things I learned were great. But the biggest change was what God did in my heart. I realized that I wanted to be a man of integrity, that what I did in private and public where there was no difference. I began to realize that I wanted to become a leader. And YWAM gave me that opportunity. Um, God began to speak to me about becoming a teacher and, uh, and learning to build this craft of being able to speak. 
And, and God began to really bring a revelation that he is a missional God, and therefore all of his people are called into his mission. And I cannot overstate how glad I am that Jesus totally revolutionized my heart and he completely changed the trajectory of my life to something more beautiful and more missional and more fulfilling than anything I could have imagined when I showed up having no idea what was happening for my DTS. And it was work. Discipleship, it wasn't free, it wasn't easy. But it was a, the beginning of an amazing journey and one that I hope for many of you um, will, will actually change the way that you understand the character of God, change the way that you understand that God sees you and set you on a path of saying, all right, my life is committed in whatever geography to seeing God's mission advanced through me. So bless you all in wherever you're at in your journey. And uh, thanks for giving me some time.